jump right into it. You you said you just uh, acquired two competitors. Yeah, we've we're enjoying the uh, Trump economy for what's left of it, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been very very busy and has been for the last five years. Um, and then uh, my my competitor just finally got a hold of us because he was he was worried about what the new administration was going to do with the economy and. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a little more optimistic about it, so I agreed to purchase. So we uh, went round and round for quite a while and finally arrived at a number we could live with. And, uh, yes, we purchased. He represented two of my competitors, so it was basically two, two companies in one. And then so that allows us to take over the entire market in uh, the Midwest. And they, they would always, because they've been around for quite a long time, not as long as we have, but almost as long, they, they always kept our prices uh, artificially low. By eliminating that and absorbing them into us, now the cost of hammers should go up, will go up, and, and that's really why I bought it. Not because we like their hammer line. No, we will, we will dissolve that hammer line, and it will just be ours then. That's it in a nutshell. Very cool. Congratulations on that uh, that endeavor finally uh, coming into fruition. And uh, yes. so, so you've uh, you've you're 25 years in the running from what it looks like uh, with American Hammer. No, I've owned it for 35 years. 35 years. Okay. Uh, you've yeah, been I've, there for I've bought it at 20 year 20 years old. Um, I'll celebrate my 55th birthday this year. <laughs> That's cool. Congratulations again. I, uh, so then, uh, and you're, are you coming to the Made in America celebration this year in October, right? Yes, that is the plan. Uh, less excited than I was a, a year or two ago because, again, I, I, forgive my, my uh, love for uh, our former president, uh, but I couldn't, you know, I, I always felt that he kind of gave Brett, Brett, Brett What's the word I'm looking for? He breathed air into the whole Made in America uh, movement. Kind of went stagnant for quite a few years. Wasn't really that popular. Uh, and I truly believe that he made it what it is now again today. Uh, uh, it's too bad what happened in 2020. I was looking forward to, to doing that while he was still our president. But uh, it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, and yes, we will be a part of the the uh the celebration there again in 2021 great and um yeah yeah i i agree that trump obviously poured uh i mean he's started the momentum but put the attention back on it because it was a very big deal that our founder don buckner um my partner has been saying for 20 years um that that this was a big issue and now it's really right in front of our faces and you know, fortunately or unfortunately, COVID exposed the supply chain weakness and our dependence on the most simple things like PPE. And so, uh, you know, the new administration, that, like I know that you also said you're optimistic and I am too, because they're at least harping a lot about American made and, and they're signing more legislation into that. Uh, so, so we shall see. Um, but but yeah, and we uh, <clears throat> even before Trump, we were on this uh, this American made bandwagon, and then he, his him putting the spotlight on it just helped us grow, which has helped American manufacturers grow. So we uh, we're running full full steam ahead, and uh, and I, I think we can we can continue what what he started. Well, good, and I hope so. I mean, I think it is it's a uh, worthy uh, title to be a part of. I mean, I didn't hear about. I mean, of course, Made in America. Uh, we're, we're very much that and always have been and will always be. Um, I didn't know much there was a movement until I saw, you know, back when I was watching the news, I think I saw a special on Fox News, yep. uh, that Trump was there or was, a, a, was at the convention. Um, and so that I got excited about that and I instantly emailed you guys and, and got registered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, um, it's really cool how it all came into place. He wasn't able to come to our convention just because of security issues, but he invited us to the White House, uh, and that, and that's what that we was, saw exactly. So, and Fox News has been great with giving us lots of publicity and inviting our manufacturers on to their show on a regular basis, uh, still, which is you know to this day, which is awesome. And they'll be at our event again this year, and. Uh, 
So you, that's cool that you've been on board that with our movement that we, you know, with our, it's, we're just a little small piece of the pie, but uh, our voice has gotten louder and, and, uh, and I'm, there's cool companies like you that we find every day. So you are optimistic about the future though with you, with your company as a whole. And, and uh, can you just go into more what you got going on today? Are you, are you more consumer? Are you more B2B? To, I mean, uh, distributors can give me a, as if I didn't know anything about American Hammer. Sure. Um, we're 95% B2B, okay. although I'll get a call periodically. In fact, I had just two this, this week from end users, and, you know, we're, we're problem solvers. The end users that contacted me, it was just two. One was a 80-year-old man, and it was a pleasure talking to him, and I, I spent the time to kind of help him figure out what kind of hammer he needed for his you know, his hobby, and that was working on restoring old plastic cars. So our hammers can be used certainly in, in, in a hobby environment, working on cars, working on lawnmowers, working on, you know, just things that you do in your garage because the idea behind the hammer, our hammer, is the soft, it's soft in nature and it doesn't damage whatever you're striking. So in his case, he was working on an old Model A and he couldn't get a drum off, a brake drum. So... You know, we talked for a good while, and I didn't, I didn't put him on hold. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't shine him on. I just kept talking with him, and and he wrote me a very nice letter, and it was a very sweet thing that happened there. And so mm -hmm. I have those moments, those very private, individual uh, moments, and then we'll we'll talk to multi-million, if not billion-dollar industries like SpaceX or. Cool. Uh, the entire auto industry that uses our hammers. Uh, we design and make hammers for specific applications, but there are two common themes, non-sparking, which is one, and non-marring. Not always do they apply to one application. So in the case of, for example, the nuclear power industry, came to me years ago and said, listen, we had a hammer, not yours. It was a dead blow hammer. Uh, that the contents uh, spilled out into one of our reactors during a, a maintenance uh, application. And the thousands of little BBs that we can't account for worked their way down into the turbine. Mm -hmm. So we had to shut down the reactor, turn on the other reactor, which wasn't due to be turned on, uh, and cost us $9 million. Mm -hmm. So then you make a dead blow hammer that has an exact amount of moving material inside the head in the event it was breached. Mm -hmm. Took a few years to design uh, because a dead blow hammer basically works on inertia. All the little thousands of BBs, uh, as you raise the hammer, uh, goes over your shoulder, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then com as you swing down to hit, uh, it then takes that inertia and strikes the material that you're strike that you're hitting. And it causes what they refer to as a dead blow. So we had to be able to have moving material, but the, the goal was if it ever, in the unlikely event, it opened up, they used it too far, what have you, uh, they would be able to retrieve an exact amount of material. So, and they had to be able to do it with, a, with the simplest mean. In our case, it was a magnet. So. We designed a dead blow hammer that 14 washers slide back and forth on a shaft. And if they open, if it opened up the cavity and they fell out, they would be able to retrieve 14 uh, fill washers with a magnet. Yeah. And so that made that hammer FME compliant, foreign material extraction compliant. There's a whole movement of that. <laughs> Who knew? I knew. Uh, that's so, just, yeah, yeah. So we that's, just, that's the extremes. You have the 80 year old hobbyist that you spent time with, and then you have the designs that you've spent years to come up with and, and solve a problem. Correct. And, and, and everything in between. And if I may, uh, another hammer was born out of necessity uh, the other day. It, it was for the cryogenics industry. I like well, cryogenics. All I can think of uh, Ted Williams freezing his head. Uh, I don't know anything about cryogenics. And I, it took me a while to understand what cryogenics was and how it applies to industry. And it's basically uh, taking gas and then uh, supercooling it to a cryogenic state so it can be transported 
uh, to industry, be it nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, helium. If you go on, it's about nine different cryogenic gases. Well, they're running tanker trucks all over the United States, Mexico, and Canada, and they needed a hammer that had one application only, and that was to undo the cryo uh, wing nuts. It's called a cryo nut, and they have to strike it to, um, to loosen it and strike it to tighten it so that they can put a hose and transport cryogenic gas uh, from, what, from the tanker truck to whatever app, holding tank that is at their customer. And they didn't have a hammer for this because they were dealing with 400 degrees below zero. I, I, who knew? And so I, they came to me. We, came, we designed a, a hammer basically the same way you and I are talking over the phone uh, <coughs> using a go-to-meeting type application. And we're, we're, we're designing it together. And then, we, then comes the, the testing part of it. So we make it, and then we test it. And then the first one, it failed because it was too long. And this hammer could not have a handle, meaning it couldn't have steel in it, it couldn't have wood, couldn't have fiberglass. It had to be 100% cast brass. Uh, it's actually manganese bronze, but uh, it, it had to be strong at 12 inches long. And that was a challenge. So we came up with uh, exact dimensions that would work. And then after four, no, sorry, 4,000 strikes on both faces, both sides of the head, yeah. it's still holding up as a hammer. So it was a success. Uh, one was not, second one was, and now every single, uh, pra these are companies called Praxair, uh, Air Gas, uh, the Keenan and Automotive uh, Advantage Group, I'm sorry, Keenan Advantage Group, these are trucking companies or gas companies that use trucking companies to haul their gases and they needed a hammer and that's what we designed and that's what's working and now there's a, one of our hammers on the back of every tanker truck, all 28,000 tanker trucks that crisscross North America. So another application and like you said, yes, it could be small application or it could be massive. Um, I could go on, but I don't know how much time you got. For <laughs> Those are already amazing points. Then, uh, so you're in Keenan Advantage. That's, I mean, they're the largest, obviously, trucking company. I know Bruce. Uh, he was the CEO. I think he just retired. Uh, that's that's so cool. And then that is uh, Keenan is the one who came to me. So it was one of their terminal operators. Now he has an executive position, but at the time he was just in charge of this type of application. And it was him and I that designed this hammer together. And it was Keenan. Yeah. We call it CAG. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The CAG the is CAG. what who, who spearheaded this whole hammer campaign. That, so, is, yeah. that is cool. Yeah, my Bruce Blaze has been the CEO and the uh, president for a decade or more. And he, he's my dad's childhood best friend. I, uh, that's a cool company just to see their trucks. All, all world. Small world. It is. Uh, uh, go on. Tell me more. I, I do have a question. I do have questions, actually. Um, are you, is Wilmington, North Carolina, where your manufacturing plant is? We have two locations. Um, we actually have three. We have a warehouse distribution center in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, we have our foundry that does our heavy castings in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, and nine years ago, well, 12 years ago, I said, you know, what? I am tired of nine months of cold. We can manufacture anywhere. Uh, we, long story short, we stumbled on Wilmington, uh, just by luck and we said, this is it. And so six or seven months of moving, we've, we've moved all of it down here, not all of it, but the assembly of it, the heart of it all. And yes, uh, I would say most of what we do is done right here in Wilmington. Uh, Wilmington is not an industrial town and they don't really support industry. It's a, it's a tourist town. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, we're crammed into a small building because it, it, we need specific zoning. So we have our feelers out there for land uh, that will work for our, our, you know, needs. And then we'll probably build about a 15,000 square foot building. And that should house everything under one roof. Will you stay in North Carolina for that building? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I don't <laughs> want to move. Again. I, I, yeah, well, it's beautiful. It's, uh, that's cool. Um, all right, and then my another question. So you you <clears throat> acquired this American Hammer tw twenty years ago. Is that what you said, or thirty years ago? Did I understand correctly? Thirty five years ago, uh, I was 
I went to school to be an airline pilot. That was my dream. That's what I envisioned myself doing. Um, I, no one was hiring a 19-year-old fresh out of training um, uh, pilot. So I was flying everywhere. And then I answered an ad to be a delivery boy uh, for a hammer company, a very small niche hammer company. And I needed to work. So I, for $5 an hour, I was delivering hammers. Uh, there's a lot more to our story, so delivering hammers doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but basically, all of our hammers are recastable. We have 600 factories that use our hammers directly, not through distribution. Uh, they are distributed through, you know, direct. Mm -hmm. So we have printer vans that go and pick up and exchange worn out hammers on site. Uh, roughly about 600 customers. Uh, it takes about eight weeks to service all of them, mm -hmm. and then it starts over again. Uh, and we start at, you know, customer A and then at customer Z eight weeks later and then start it over again. All those worn out hammers get shipped down here. They get melted down. Uh, the handles are in, uh, inspected for reuse, and then heads are report and then go out in giant crates uh, to the warehouse, and it's the cycle starts all over again. So back when I was working and answered the ad to do this, I mean, we didn't go through nearly as many hammers. I mean, mm -hmm. a Toyota pickup truck was what I used. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I would go to a, the handful of accounts that we had and then exchange hammers on site. I mean, the concept was still there. It just was very small. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, being a 20-year-old, I fell asleep at the wheel and I ended up, end over end uh, with this truck with hammers spreading all over the interstate and totaled it and didn't die and um, the owner at the time was so upset with me and I made an offer to purchase and I caught him at the right time I was he was pissed off wow. so I scraped my money together and sold whatever I had and back then banks would loan uh, 25% so I had to come up with the other 25 and did and at the same time I had accepted offer and ready to roll, I had a offer, a, a job offering from Delta. So I had to make a decision, and um, I decided that the hammer was was for me. So we went from um, you know making about seventy different kinds of hammers to six hundred and eighty as of today. <laughs> that is a story. I. Uh... Uh, I, I, I guarantee I'm not going to edit any of this audio. I'm probably going to just use it as a straight podcast because that was really cool. I, uh, it, it, it's, um, it's just profound that you made that decision to do I become the airline thing that I wanted to become or do I follow this entirely just endeavor of being an entrepreneur? You obviously have a business mindset because it's so hard to run a company and make it grow like this. Uh, and it, I, when I interview very unique executives or CEOs like you, it's – it's cool to just to listen to how you how you process and, and analyze everything. It wasn't any formal training. I had a, I had a, a good father. I had a father that uh, was a business executive. Mm -hmm. um, I would go on his trips. I lost him at uh, I was age fifteen. He was forty, mm -hmm. and that was in a car accident. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the short fifteen years that I had him in my life, I I watched, I listened, and I learned. And he was very savvy. Uh, you know. I, a lot of it is, is blessing. I don't want to call it luck. You know, you're blessed. Yeah. Uh, you treat people as you wish to be treated. You're, you're, you're honest. Uh, and the, the better you are, the better you get. So, and that goes for just about anything in life. Yeah. So I've, I've always been up uh, above board on, on the level. I've always treated people with honesty. And I believe I've been blessed as a result. Uh, not a wizard of any kind. I'm a problem solver, and I solve them as every day presents new ones, yeah. new challenges. And so you survive on that. Uh, we're a lot bigger today than we used to be, and that was just having a desire to not necessarily grow, but never to say no. Uh, I, I, get, I get calls every day, all week, you know, can you... I got a guy just today who wants to make a special hammer for his family tree. To hang it above his mantle in his house, and want and, and wants to wanted to know if we could make the head for him. Now, ordinarily, I don't sell a head; I sell a hammer. But I didn't say no, and that project will turn out to be a, a beautiful project for him. 
uh, we won't make much money on it, but it's not always about that. And so, yeah, again, every day is a unique situation. It's not saying, no, yes, we can.